Welcome, David, again here for this Q&A about the Green Deal call. Thank you. Thank you, Hara, for inviting me. So what is the Green Deal call? Uh, yeah, uh, as you might know, the, <clears throat> the European Green Deal is, a, is an ambitious plan that the European Commission has uh, defined in order to uh, create a uh, a Europe, Europe uh, a European uh, continent that has no emission of greenhouse gases by 2050. So the idea of the Green Deal is to foster an economic uh, growth that is decoupled uh, from resource uh, use. Uh, the European Green Deal that has been recently published in by the end of uh, September is a uh, includes a number of calls uh, with uh, with quite a lot of money in order to invest in research and development and innovation projects uh, that will develop uh, new technologies to uh, facilitate this transformation into a more uh, sustainable um, region no yeah because this is I think the rest of the planet is looking at us, how really we are leading the change and the transition to have a more greener economy and as well a greener industry and a greener society. Yeah, yeah I, th I think I agree. No? I, think, I think Europe is probably um, yeah, the region who is probably leading no? the, 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 cha the change, the transformation into a more a sustainable uh, society and 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 planet and uh, and I think uh, um, von der Leyen no so so the this transformation as a very interesting opportunity for Europe to also to capitalize and to create economy and to create uh, economic growth and, and jobs and opportunities for European citizens and European companies as well. What are the main differences? between the calls because i think there are 12 calls different yes so actually yeah if you look at the at, at how the european green deal uh, call uh, has been defined is uh, there are like um, many things no there are actually 20 uh, topics 20 calls that are distributed in 10 uh, thematic priorities and um, and there are different types of calls. So there are uh, what they are called innovation actions, research and innovation actions, and coordination support actions. And um, and basically, the European Green Deal is part of um, is part of the Horizon 2020. So all the terms and um, and conditions and requirements that apply to the uh, typical or Horizon 2020 calls mm -hmm. are also applicable to these uh, Green Deal calls. In, in, in particular, if you want me to just um, uh, yeah, enumerate the, the, the type of uh, topics that mm -hmm. are included in this um, Green Deal call, so we have um, uh, climate, climate uh, change, we have uh, clean and affordable and secure energy, uh, there is a call about circular economy, another call about efficient buildings, uh, also about the smart mobility, agro-food, biodiversity, uh, pollution and toxic free environments, um, knowledge so the, there is a call also about fostering uh, european research infrastructures and and also uh, there is a, a call there are three calls that are um, about uh, empowering citizens as well and one from africa i was like if like there this is one how to bring technology from energy efficiency into the African continent and countries. Yeah, I, th I think so. I, ha I haven't read it, uh, that one in, in depth, but I, I, I read, I think, the, the topic descri description. Yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah. So who can participate and how can we create a consortium? Because usually this, um, the issue here that we have is like there are a lot of clubs already and always they are the same people applying to the call. and. One thing I am trying is to 
incentivize more the startups to apply or how we can put more startups in different consortiums like they can benefit as well of this funding because the, the startups are really making a change and really bringing very high levels of innovation we can say to the market so who can participate the startups can participate as well yeah, well, it applies the, the same rules as in uh, Horizon 2020. So any any type of uh, entity can participate and can apply. Uh, startups, small companies, uh, large organizations, also non-for-profit organizations can apply. The main difference is between non-for-profit and for-profit entities because depending on the call, in some calls, uh, the, the for-profit uh, entities can uh, get uh, only 70% of the budget funded, while the non-for-profit can get 100%. But um, but most uh, most companies and and most entities can can participate. And uh, and and the question is how, no? As you as you said, no? How to create a consortium? And actually, I agree with you, no? The um, there are universities and organizations and cluster organizations that are very used to creating uh, consortiums and uh, and they, um, they 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 usually involve the same type of, uh, types of companies um, but also on the other hand there are a lot of brokerage events you no know, that are organized by by the European Commission, by national contact points, and that could be a, a very uh, interesting channel for startups. No, uh, they can get into these brokerage events or brokerage online platforms, and they can connect with other companies and 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 consortium uh, coordinators. But in any case, this is um, this is difficult. So. I think the best way for a startup is actually to yeah to contact or a university or a cluster or a consultant uh, that is specialized in in creating consortiums so that they cannot they just they can join uh, a, a consortium that is already uh, active no yeah yeah oh they can contact us as well as yeah. <laughs> so what is the roadmap from searching partners to send a proposal. So how this look like this process? Yeah, so so the, the process um, it depends on it depends on the calls actually. Uh, yeah, as, as there are uh, 20 different calls, I, I don't know all of them. I know some, only some, some of them, but um, but in general, these calls are looking for quite big consortiums because they are quite big uh, budgets. Well, so um, so the first step is to uh, to organize this consortium, no, and uh, and this takes a time. Uh, some time and usually it's led by uh, a consultant or a, or a cluster organization or a university no and and once this consortium is is built and and there is um, a project concept no a, a clear idea of what the, the the consortium wants to do then usually there is a, a kickoff proposal preparation meeting in which all the all the partners meet today of course online and and they take several decisions on how to to prepare the proposal and also usually there is a coordinator who uh who gathers the information from all the partners and and makes um a, a coherent product no of the proposal and that's also what we uh, what we do no we we coordinate this process and we also um make sure that the the proposal has an entity has some uh, specific objectives and some uh, and the proposal has um, has is co is coherent no even if if they ha if the, every proposal has has many different contributions from many partners but it, it needs to have some some clear project scope and some clear project objectives what are the best practices to write a proposal for the green deal well, so uh, as as with any other proposal, I would say that it's good to be um, clear and concise when writing. Uh, I would say also that it's good to have a very clear idea of what the impact will be. Mm -hmm. And this has been something very important for all the Horizon uh, 2020 program, 
uh, impact is really important. So we have to look at and uh, not only what we will do, but also what, what will be the result. And, and with regards to uh, the, the Green Deal, uh, yeah, everyone has to, um, uh, to, to have a very clear idea that uh, the, the main impacts are related to sustainability, of course. So, it's, so you have to try to quantify what is going to be the impact in terms of uh, greenhouse emissions, energy savings, uh, pollution, um, I don't know, um, biofungicides, uh, things like that. No, you have to very, to quantify very, very well what is the green impact of the project. Mm -hmm. From your point of view, from Strata, how are you helping organizations to come together in a consortium and write a proposal? Yeah, so what, what we usually do, we, we work, we start working with uh, one or two um, leaders, no, uh, leading companies usually that want to, uh, that have a, a project idea no, in mind. Um, and then once we have this, this, uh, this leading company that, uh, that is usually, uh, some cases is, al is already our client, uh, we start looking for other partners to join and to complement the <clears throat> and to complement the, the consortium. Uh, this takes time. It depends on on on, on the demand and the interest of the call, the interest of the project, and so on. But it, it can take up to up to even several months. In, in this case, we don't have so much time because the, the deadline is in January, so we have to move uh, really fast. Um, and once we, we have this uh, consortium, or at least the main partners, we, uh, we start uh, usually gathering the, the key information and preparing the proposal. And we, we do a lot of the writing of the proposal, but of course we need a lot of help from the, from the partners, uh, especially in defining the activities that they want to do in the project. Yeah, the content, uh, no, what they are going to do, they know best. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, because we can we can uh, we can give a, a framework, no, for the program, a, a project scope, um, a, a governance model, uh, an intellectual property model. That's something that most projects uh, have in common, no, uh, and that's our experience. But of course, if you if the company wants to, I don't know, uh, create a new airport, uh, we are not experts experts in airports, so we we need their <laughs> knowledge. Uh, about how an airport is built, no, um, and that's something that, of course, the the, the partners must uh, contribute. Mm -hmm. and the last question is: If you have already some extra advice or tips you want to share with the audience about the Green Deal and how to prepare the grants and the proposals and how to deal with the consortium. So. So yeah, so just um, maybe just um, two uh, uh, advices. I mean, the, the first one maybe is just to um, encourage uh, all. Also, as you said, uh, startups, um, comp small companies that have never applied to any European call. I think this is a great opportunity. Uh, it's the biggest. Um, European call and the last one of the Horizon uh, 2020 program. There is 1 billion euro available. So it's a great opportunity for small companies. So don't be afraid um, of um, contacting us um, to, 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 to look for opportunities. That's the first advice. And, and the second is do it as soon as possible <laughs> because, uh, because the, yeah, the, the clock is ticking and the deadline is by the end of January and it takes a lot of time and effort to prepare uh, a good proposal. So um, yeah, um, encourage everyone to, to go for it. It's a great opportunity, I think. Uh, thank you very much, David. Thank you, thank you, Hara. Bye. Bye, -bye.